Hey everybody, Peptide Buddy here. Happy New Year. Let's start 2024 off strong by going over a peptide we discussed upon conception of this channel, a staple of the Liver King peptide cycle, IGF-1 LR3, aka Long Arginine 3 IGF-1, a peptide that, despite lack of human research or much research in general, is quite popular. And just quickly, if you love the peptide research like I do and you want to see more videos like these, a peptide-filled 2024, just give us a like and a subscribe. It's the only way to support the channel, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Back to the video. Let's start off with a brief review of the pathway that takes GHRH to IGF-1. As we know, release of GHRH growth hormone releasing hormone from the hypothalamus initiates release of growth hormone from the pituitary and IGF-1 from the liver. By taking a modified version of IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor 1, which IGF-1 LR3 is, we're producing that essentially the same downstream end product. Now, IGF-1 physiologically acts really to mediate or produce the effects of growth hormone, and that's why you'll see its biggest presence during puberty. And as a growth factor, that's essentially what it stimulates, generalized growth, musculoskeletal growth, organ maturity, nerve growth. There's this full-on physiologic state defined by cellular proliferation and increased metabolic activity. Also an inhibition of apoptosis, or programmed cell death. There's actually a condition called acromegaly, where there is unregulated increased production of GH and IGF-1, where people become just holistically enlarged, and oftentimes get sleep apnea, and they have increased risks of certain type of cancers. IGF-1 LR3 is generally thought to be more potent than IGF-1, since a study in rodents about 30 years ago showed it increased growth at a higher rate than did regular IGF-1 by about 2.5 to 3 times. Additionally, it's got a longer half-life, 20 to 30 hours. So why do people use it? The perceived downstream effects of growth hormone, the reduced adiposity, i.e. fat loss, increased muscle repair and growth, those same enhancements people are looking for when they use a GHRP. Things like improved recovery, performance, and growth, and hopes for improved lean body mass. So what are the risks? As a molecule whose main role is to make things grow, one that stands out in particular is risk for malignancy, cancer. Acromegaly, as we discussed, has increased risks of certain cancers for this reason. And on top of that, IGF-1 doesn't just encourage growth, but it also plays a role in inhibiting apoptosis, or programmed cell death, which is a risk factor for cancer as well, so it's something to consider. Additionally, something to be wary of is possibility of hypoglycemia. You know, I know Liver King loves this one, and you'll see that people online find anecdotal benefit with regards to growth and recovery, when they're using IGF-1 LR3. But the data here is just too limited for me. I'm sure if you find a legitimate source, there's quite a possibility that you'll feel and look bigger, leaner, faster, stronger, but I worry about unwanted growth, things you may not be able to see, cancers, unwanted effects on the heart, organ stressors, even increased risk for sleep apnea. That's enough for me to kind of reconsider. Not to mention the limited research and all of which has been isolated to different animal studies. That said, here are my thoughts. I'm curious to hear yours. Have you used this peptide? Have you considered it? Hope you enjoyed the video. Wanted to do a remake since initially I didn't have a microphone. The background sound was out of control. And even if it's terrible now, it was a little bit more terrible before. Um, so please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, you take care.